Hi, it's Sean Leach here, Fit and Vital Life, and uh, in this video, I want to spend about 10 minutes talking about a bit of a hot topic in general, but especially inside of a community when the girls are embarking on their eight week drop a dress size challenge, and there's that conflict between um, losing weight, weighing yourself, the whole process of the, the frustrations of not losing much weight, not losing any weight, losing loads of weight, the whole process of it, and getting down in general if the weight doesn't always go your way early on in the process. So, you know, I've been talking about it a lot with the girls in our group these past couple of weeks, and uh, I just wanted to um, break it down even more in this video presentation. Hopefully it won't take any more than 10 minutes of your time, but I think this will help you. And if you need any help with this, if you need help with losing weight, toning up, or anything in between, and just some accountability to, to get the job done, um, you can reach out and I'll remind you again at the end of this video, or you can shoot us a message. Okay, so I want to talk about how to weigh yourself properly in this presentation. I'm going to break everything down from top to bottom. Okay, so I've spent the past five years helping the public lose weight and understand the problems and the issues that people have with it and explaining the whole process of what it is, as well as learning this from a, a scientific analytical point of view during university when we, you know, we conduct fair tests for scientific purposes, uh, doing sports science. So I'm coming at it from a different angle, from the public side of things and understanding their sort of idea of what it's all about and also from the the analytical part which is really what it is and i'm going to break it all down to help you understand it better which will give you the confidence and the understanding that it's not the be all and end all it's just part of a process it's part it's a tool that can be used but only if it's used correctly and in conjunction with other things so let's get to it so let's have a look should be able to skip next bit okay so first of all you have to give weight loss time now i know that's probably not what you want to hear first straight off the bat but if you think about this logically right your weight loss never stops like you don't hit a weight loss goal and then you stay at that weight for the rest of your life <laughs> obviously everyone knows that but i think that we can forget about that sometimes and it can become frustrating if you don't lose weight very quickly or whatever but you have to give any process of change or transformation time you know, you didn't just get a degree after a few months. You didn't pass your driving test after a couple of weeks. You didn't start a successful business in a few weeks. You didn't get a job promotion after just a few weeks. Some of you lucky and blessed folks may have, but for most people, and it's the same with weight loss. Some people are very blessed genetically. It can happen a lot quicker. But for most people, it takes time. Everything, anything takes time. You've got to follow a process. You've got to do the work and be understanding and accept the fact that it's not always going to happen to you straight out the bat. Like it's it's sometimes it makes us laugh actually. But after like three, four, five weeks, you know, people can get down if they haven't lost that much weight. And it's like, well, if you think about it, it's three or five weeks or however many weeks, even if you want to say months of your whole entire life. Like it doesn't start, it doesn't end. Weight loss and maintaining weight is a lifelong process. You'll stop, you'll be this way, you'll be that way, you'll be this way, you'll be that way, and then you'll be that way, and that way, and that way, and then you'll be that, 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 that. It never stops. You cannot maintain a specific weight. There's very few people, very disciplined people, who have got the, 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 um, the discipline to maintain a weight for the rest of the life. And even then, they'll probably struggle to maintain that. So just accept it. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. It takes time. It's part of it. It's life. That is the fact. You're never going to maintain a shape. It's going to take time to lose it. It's going to take time to gain it. Ignore your BMI. I'm just going to make sure you can see that. Um, I came up with one of the girls in our eight-week challenge about the doctor telling her about an EBI is classed as obese. And I'm just going to nail this in the coffin right now. On Swojega is labelled obese. Any rugby player, any English football player, any football player you watch on the telly, if you went off their BMI, or labeled obese. So forget about it. It doesn't exist as a protocol anymore. Your BMI is basically your weight over your height. And as I'm about to explain in this in this thing, your, your weight isn't just made up of the body fat. And really when you're wanting to when you're on a weight loss journey, that's what you're wanting to lose is body fat. So because a rugby player, a bodybuilder and a footballer are predominantly built of muscle, they weigh a lot or a fair bit because they're built of muscle. They're heavy in muscle, not body fat. So therefore, and then, and then if you're tall, like a lot of rugby players are, 
you've got that those those conditions that BMI is based on height over weight. So if you're massive and very muscular, you'll be classed as obese because those are the only two factors that base your BMI. Weight over height doesn't exist. Forget about it. It's not valid. And like I mentioned before, you never stop learning and managing your weight loss. It never stops. So let's just get that. First of all, I just want to nip that in the bud and just give you that sort of uh, clarity there um, that it's, it's a process and this stuff will help you um, manage it better and make you feel better mentally, I hope. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so what is happening when you step on the scales? It is a snapshot of your total weight at that minute. That's what it is. It's like somebody taking a, like an MRI of your body, but in weight. It's like a photograph. It's like, that is how much you weigh at this present moment in time. When you're a little baby, you weigh a lot less. When you're a child, you weigh different. When you're an adult, you weigh different. When you're, you, you, Your weight is always changing. It's a snapshot of your, the, that moment you step on the scales. So you're, when you step on the scales, you, you're, you're weighing your total body. So that includes your organs, which generally don't get taken out or added. So that doesn't generally influence your weight on a, uh, any given day. Your muscles, which do influence your weight on any given day, which I'll explain in more detail as you get more muscular. Like I mentioned before about the rugby players, you're going to increase your weight because you have more inside of you as your muscles, a muscle may start like that. And as it grows, it gets bigger. So therefore you have more inside you because the muscle has grown and that's what happens with body fat maybe you've got a little bit of body fat but then as it grows you have more of it inside you so therefore it increases your weight your joints generally don't change obviously as you grow they will get bigger and therefore increase your weight so generally why you get heavier and bigger in weight as you get older because you're growing and likewise with your bones and your bone density can increase as well if you're very uh, muscular and strong so that can also influence your weight so just think about that for a second there's your, your weight is comprised of lots of different things it doesn't just mean i'm good or bad at losing weight it has different components and i'll talk about that a bit more so why weigh yourself what's the whole point of weighing yourself what is it you're trying to achieve you want to weigh less but what you're really trying to do when you're stepping on the scales and you're weighing yourself regular, your, your whole objective is you want to weigh less in body fat. You want to lose body fat. You don't want to lose the things that I mentioned before. We could take out half your organs and you weigh less. <laughs> you know, I could, I could take half the bones out of your body. You could be a half limbed person walking around and you weigh half the weight practically. I could chop some of your joints off, you'd weigh less. And if you don't really train with weights, you won't have, your, your muscles won't be that big or toned or whatever you want to call it. So therefore, you won't weigh that much. Skinny people, more farad, doesn't have very much body weight, uh, body, sorry, uh, muscle mass or body fat. Therefore, he weighs very, very little. On Schwarzenegger, on the other hand, is comprised of a humongous amount of muscle mass. So he weighs a lot more. Now, those are two opposite extremes which don't include body fat. The general public, me, you, Tom, Dick, and Harry down the corner, our goal is we look in the mirror and we don't see any muscles. You know, we don't see an Arnold Schwarzenegger, we don't see a skinny Mo Farah. We see body fat. We see a layer of fat which separates, which stops us from seeing our muscles. Like when Arnold Schwarzenegger looks in the mirror, he sees his muscles because his body fat is so low. When Mo Farah looks in the mirror, he doesn't see very many muscles, but he doesn't see much body fat either because his body fat is so low and his muscle mass is so low. Most people in the public, we want to lose body fat. That's what's stored under the skin. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. That's our primary objective. We don't just want to step on the scales and weigh less. We want to lose body fat specifically. And as I mentioned, you don't want to lose muscle, etc. You want to build muscle tone. It helps with the body fat burning process over a period of time. The whole point of you, when you take your clothes off and you're not happy what you see in the mirror, you're not happy because you've got body fat there and it's stopping you from seeing that toned figure that you've got in your mind. Everyone has muscles. This is what I'm saying. We all have muscles. It's not like you go to the gym to 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 to, to 
make them appear in your body. They're already there. What stops you from seeing yours in the mirror is the body fat because body fat is stored under the skin. That's where it goes. If you eat too much stuff and you don't exert it, in other words, you don't use it for energy when you do the activities such as exercising, that doesn't just like just dribble out of your bottom or evaporate from your skin. It just stays in there and it gets stored as body fat and it has nowhere else to go apart from just stored under the skin. So our whole purpose of weighing ourselves and embarking on any weight loss journey is to lose body fat specifically. So just keep that into your mind. You're trying to lose body fat. You're not just trying to lose weight any which way, shape or form. Weighing yourself is an analytical tool to measure your progress in losing body fat. That's the goal. Okay. When you want to weigh yourself, we're using it as a tool to help us gauge if we are losing body fat, because as I've just clearly explained, that's what you're trying to do. You can't argue with that. That's the fact. Okay, so it's important to get that distinction of what you're trying to do when you step on the scales. It's not just about your overall weight. You specifically want to lose body fat. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I, I think it's better to say I'm right. So... I'm in the way there. How to that that says um how to make weighing yourself a fair test. But my my ugly mug is in the way. So here's what you need, here's the best practices. Here's what you need to do to make sure you what I touched on before at the start, when it was coming at it from a, a scientific analytical point of view, is because this is an analytical tool, it's gonna be a fair test. Because you're using it to measure your progress, you can't really just dilly dally around it. It's got to be, you know, you've got to, if you think about science in high school, you would always get bombarded with making things a fair test. How can, and like, if you think about all this vaccine stuff and anything that goes on, you know, it's constantly being tested and it's constantly being tested in a fair way to make sure the results you get are not accurate and correct. So it's the same with weighing yourself. You're trying to get an accurate representation of what's going on with your body weight and your body fat. So to make sure that you, you get those right results, it has to be a fair test. So if somebody said to you, someone, if I just passed, if I just passed you this bag and said, yeah, go wear that bag, step on that scales, tell me how much it weighs. It's empty. Would it be a fair measure if you loaded that bag full of bricks and then put it on the scales? Would you be getting a fair test, a fair reading of how much that bag weighs if you've loaded it with bricks? The answer is no. You're not giving the bag a fair reading of how much it weighs because you've chucked it full of bricks. You want to know how much the bag weighs, but you're loading it full of bricks first. You're not going to get a fair, accurate reading of how much the bag weighs because you've increased the weight of the bag by loading it with bricks. This is essentially what is happening when you weigh yourself after meals. Obviously, I don't think you're going to be eating enough food to um, to match the same way that the bag for the bricks will. But let's go back to the basics. Of you, 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 the the, the um, what your body is made up of: organs, bones, muscles, joints. The only other th and and the, yeah, and your body fat. So your muscle mass can increase, and your body fat can increase significantly over your lifetime. The other things don't really influence your weight much unless you have organs removed or organs added or whatever. It's rare. There's rare or minimal impact to your body weight over a period of time. The other component to increasing your weight is the stuff you put into the body, i.e. your food and drink. An easy way to sort of put this in perspective and make you understand how sort of simple it is don't know if you watch boxing much or if you know much about the process of boxers being weighed. And even bodybuilders as well when they're leading up to competition. They've got to, they've got to hit a certain weight. And it's well documented, well understood if you if you follow it anyway, or if you know what they, they what what they put the bodies under. But you know, they'll be when they go to get weighed, they're dehydrated severely. Because well not severely, you know, they the dehydrate. They push the dehydration to the max because they don't they want to minimize what's inside of their body so that they make that weight you know it's well understood that you know people will go to extreme lengths to cut weight and what they're really doing is just limiting the amount of stuff they put in their body i.e food and water to the point where their overall weight is so low or meets the requirements that they're after 
So it's so easily influenced. Your weight is so easily influenced by food and drink. Put a fair bit in, drum on the scales, you're going to weigh a lot more, just like with the bag example. Take loads out, you're going to weigh a lot less. So you're not giving your body a fair reading of your actual body weight if you load the body full of food and then jump on the scales and say, oh, I'm crap, I'm rubbish, I've ruined everything, I'm going to just give up for the rest of my life. Don't weigh yourself after a day is full of meals. Weigh yourself first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Likewise, don't go too extreme and try and cheat the process, which well, little boxes don't cheat it, but they'll manipulate it to make sure they make weight by not eating for a few days and not drinking for a few days. Don't do that either. Make it a fair test. So have a good process of a week or two of training hard, eating better, a week, two, three weeks. Jump on the scales first thing in the morning, get a reading, do the same again every two or three weeks under the same conditions every time. So you follow, generally, you want to try and follow the same nutrition protocol, the same training protocol. So again, it's under the fair test. You can, you, you, you're testing if that process is working and you're getting a fair reading every time under the same conditions, the same day, the same time, the same clothes, the same meals the night before. You see what I mean? You've got to make it a fair test. But it's not just about the weight on the scales. Your true weight is first thing in the morning, not empty stomach. That's what that says, but uh, my ugly mug's cutting that off. Um, if you weigh yourself at different times under different conditions, Every time, it's not going to be a fair test and it's not going to be a fair reading. This just takes you back to high school science. If you like the Bunsen burner and you're, and you're, you're, you're doing whatever you're doing and you're heating it under one temperature and then you do dump it down and then you go and heat it under another temperature and you're trying to work, you're trying to get a, a test and a reading, it's not going to work. If it's under different conditions every time, it's not going to work. If, if, if Boris Johnson came on the telly and goes, right, we've been testing this vaccine a couple of weeks ago, Tested on two monkeys, it went all right. Uh, couldn't be bothered for a few weeks, so I uh, tested on about a handful of men. Uh, I haven't tried it with women yet, but it doesn't matter. We'll just see how it goes. Wouldn't work, different conditions. It's got to go through a process. You've got to test, 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 test. Honestly, I mean, it sounds extreme, but it's really quite simple. This, this simplifies it because you understand what you're doing more. And it makes everything more um, understandable and less stressful on your mind. Because if you do it so erratic and not in any process, then you're, you're always going to be worrying and stressing. Oh, you're not doing anything. Why is it not going down? Why is it not going up? Why is this? Why is that? Uh, I'm doing so well, but I'm not losing weight. You've got all these questions bumbling up in your mind because you don't know what's going on. You're not tracking the whole process. You're not making it a fair test. You're not measuring everything. So you're bringing up all these questions because you don't know what the hell is going on. Get back to the basics. So again, this is cut off, but make sure the weight you are losing is body fat and not muscle. And here's how you do that. Get scales which measure your body fat as well as your muscle mass. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but test them properly in the way that I just mentioned under the same conditions. It'll give you a decent ballpark. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but it just gives you an understanding. Like one of the girls in, um, in our group, you know, we track the weight, the body fat, and the measurements and the inches. So we know now. Like, because she jumped on the scales, I think it was six pounds body fat loss, but at the same time, her body fat went down and her muscle mass went up. Now, I know it's not 100% accurate, but that gives us a picture. It gives us an understanding that, okay, she's lost some weight. She's also lost body fat and her muscle masses went up. So we can make the educated assumption that the majority of that weight loss has come from body fat because the body fats went down, the weight has went down, and the muscle masses went up. See how that works? And that inches also went down as well. So remember, body fat is stored under the skin. So take measurements, take photos so you can see. Have I shrunk in the stomach area? Do the photos look that? And does the inches look, that, look like that as well? Or is the shape change due to more muscle tone? You can see this in photos and measurements. So don't rely solely on the weight because it doesn't give you the full read. Your weight could stay still or even go up. If you've been embarking on a, a weight training process, training program where you've built some muscle strength and muscle tone. And if you haven't took your body fat, your measurements or everything else as well, you can't you know, make that better educated guess of what's going on when you just do your weight alone. So I think that's the end of the presentation. If you need any more help with 
tracking your weight, tracking your body fat, getting some help, getting started with this whole process and following the system to lose weight and have the accountability to track it all so you can actually get a result and stick at something. Shoot us a message. We'll be happy to help. And I hope this presentation has helped you. Have a great weekend. Take care.